what's up everybody? It's January 18th, 2023 in Big Bear, California, and we're actually going to take a drive all the way down the mountain just so you guys can see what the conditions are like. I know a lot of you are extremely worried about driving up here. So I was going to do a time-lapse video of it, but you guys wouldn't really get a sense of, uh, of what it's like in a time-lapse in terms of the, uh, the safety conditions, the safety of the conditions. going through the little arctic circle we're going to be going next to snow valley ski resort we're going to be going next to or through running springs and then down the mountain so i hope you guys enjoy this is definitely a difficult time to be driving up and down the mountain because it's 28 degrees and it's 6 15 p.m this is where we're at right there So I'm gonna turn it off until the light turns green, okay guys? Hang on. All right, so we're going through the village now. Looks really pretty, doesn't it, guys? So this next week, you guys, I'm gonna take you guys to Big Bear Coffee Roasting Company and we're gonna do a video there and interview the owner he's a really great dude and the cool thing is guys is as I told you it's it's the best coffee by far in town and my wife is a coffee connoisseur and she swears by it um, so if she loves it that much then, then I know it's good coffee because she doesn't do the cheap cheap coffees um, and this place is very affordable and it's just very very good he does all the coffee roasting in-house as I said it's Big Bear Coffee Roasting Company and what he said he's willing to do for you guys um, is he's willing to ship some so if you guys want some Big Bear coffee without actually coming up to Big Bear we got you handled how cool is that he's such a cool dude as I told you guys he's on dialysis three days a week at home he has a dialysis machine at home he and his wife are a great, great team. She's constantly, constantly helping him out with that. And just, I mean, if, if you make any mistakes punching in those numbers and stuff, it can be the end. So I'm like, uh, just seeing that type of teamwork is just amazing, amazing. But yeah, he, 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 deserves, a, he deserves a lot, you guys. And that would be helping to keep uh, some finances coming into this town and also I was thinking about somehow trying trying to do some like giveaways for you guys like uh, it's a dumb idea but I figured it, it probably wouldn't work but one would be like the first person to guess exactly how much snow we got from the next storm and that would be determined by my ruler out front of my house not what it says on the news but what it says in front of my house um, then I would send them a free beanie and I would do that once a month for once a month storms. But then I, th I thought about it and I figured if like a hundred people put in the exact number, what am I going to do? Like, even if it's the first person, um, I have a feeling a lot of people, let's say I say you have to start sending in your numbers at 6 PM, no earlier. If people look at their clock and it says 615, they'll know that someone probably already guessed the right number. So they won't even leave me any comment. And uh, I wanna make sure that everyone can be involved. Um, I was also thinking about doing stuff where I could try to work something out with one of these hotels up here where I can pay for you guys to have like one night. I know that's not much, you guys, but I'm, I'm really trying to do my best for you guys. Um, you know, you guys help me out all the time. And I really do want to give back as much as I can. So that's, I'm, I'm trying to like figure out some like giveaway ideas, maybe some like, like Starbucks gift cards or, um, well, obviously not Starbucks. If my friend has gift cards 
for his shop. You know what? I would never use Starbucks gift cards because of my friend's shop. He's such a good guy, you guys, and it's super high quality coffee. Um, so forget the Starbucks gift cards. Uh, just random gift cards, maybe like um, if the ski resort will help me out or if, if, if an employee would help me out with like a couple tickets or like something, maybe I can do what I did last season. I gave away three tickets to you guys, three ski lift tickets. Um, as I said, I really wanna help you guys out, show you guys a lot of love because you guys show me a lot of love. Our good friend Andy works here at Lakeview Market. Such, such a cool dude. He wants to like help this channel out with like sound and this and that. And when we go to restaurants and start eating at restaurants and showing you guys what we're eating, basically sharing the restaurant experience of Big Bear with you guys. He wanted to like help me out. He's a super, super good dude. Super, super good dude. There's, there's some really good people up here, you guys. Artichoke. But yeah, I really liked the snow giveaway idea, you guys. Where the first person, like, with certain timing to, like, guess it properly. And I, obviously, I would go through that specific video and see, like, let's say 10 people guessed 7 inches and it did snow 7 inches right in front of my place. The first comment that says 7 inches, that's the one that I would give away the free beanie to, but I thought about it, how a lot of people, if they're five minutes late, are probably not even gonna check out the video. So, I'm trying to make it a win-win for all of us. As you guys know, I'm finally starting to ask you guys to help me out in terms of subscribing, hitting the like button, and, hit, and hitting the notification bell. I didn't do it this video at the start, because I'm still not used to it. It still feels really, really crazy weird for me to, to be doing that I feel like I'm begging you guys and that just doesn't feel right so thank you guys who are subscribing though I really appreciate it my subscriber thing has jumped like significantly in the past like week <laughs> like, I, I can't believe it and you guys know that that was never the goal was to make a living off of this the goal originally guys when I first moved up here is because my family exiled me um, you know, I'm a recovering alcoholic. I was about a year and a half into my sobriety before I moved up here and uh, they exiled me and all I wanted to do was just die. But I wanted to die in a place that would at least maybe put a smile on my face every now and again. And that's a place where it snows. And the reason why I'm here is because this is the closest place to where I grew up, that where it snows. You know, it, it's I'd, I'd rather be in Mammoth, I'd rather be in Tahoe, but I didn't have any money, I didn't have anything didn't have a pot to piss in. I, I literally had nothing. So um, I moved up here and I couldn't afford to buy any thumb drives to save my videos because I wanted to record it snowing and then when I'm feeling down and out, because I was very depressed, when I'm feeling down and out, I can just watch those YouTube videos. Or not, they weren't YouTube videos at the time, but watch my videos and feel good, feel better. And I couldn't afford to save the videos on on any time type, type of external hard drive or anything so I decided to post them on YouTube and I thought I was being really smart because it's a free cloud so I did that and I decided at the very start to make the videos public because if they helped me maybe it'll help someone else and that's all I was thinking so and look look where we're at now eight years later I just I can't believe it I really can't believe it <clears throat> those of you asking why it keeps on going beep 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 it's telling me to keep my eyes on the road. That's what that sign's saying right there. And if I look down, it'll tell me to stay alert and then it'll show me like a cup of coffee. It's told me to take a break and drink a cup of coffee and stuff like that.
18 on Big Bear Boulevard. About to head out of town. It's gonna be the first video we've recorded outside of Big Bear in a long time. It shouldn't take us too long to get down though. Guys, even when I first started uh, doing these videos, I was super, super, super depressed. And these videos helped me. My depression hasn't really changed much. It's still fairly severe most of the time, but you know, I, I try to find light at the end of any tunnel I can find, and it's just really tough in this life. Life is not easy. You guys know that. You guys gotta be careful up here though right now because it's 27 degrees. This is where we're at according to the map. That's 27. These roads are moist <clears throat> and, and freezing. I've got the snow tires, so it's gripping a little bit, but even in like, when it's just a thin layer of ice, my car doesn't do that well. It's when there's a little bit of snow or a lot of snow, that's when I really kick butt. So we gotta be extra careful because we can still slide. We'll shut this off as soon as we get down to the bottom of the mountain. Hang on, guys. <clears throat> All right, guys, so we're coming up to the Big Bear Dam. You guys can see how high these snow berms are still on this side of the road as well. Just really, really up there. This is the snowiest part of town in terms of the valley. I tell you guys that all the time, but for any newer viewers, I don't want you guys to miss out on that information because it will give you a sense of where you want to book your room. The closer towards the Big Bear Dam, the more snow you'll get. If you don't want a lot of snow, like my wife, she, she doesn't like the snow. She'd prefer to be in Baldwin Lake where they don't get anything. I mean, of course, they do get snow, but it's like nothing. It's very, very little. If there's a foot over here, they have maybe an inch in Baldwin. Kind of like what just happened. Now we are on the little Arctic Circle. This is about a nine or 10 mile stretch. That takes us through. And we got some ice right here, so we gotta be a little bit careful. The temperature always rises through here too. It's amazing. Watch, you'll see it's, it's 27 right now, but the temperature is gonna definitely go up to probably 32, maybe 33, we'll see while we're on this stretch. I hope this isn't too boring for y'all, but it'll give you a sense of what's going on here. Also one thing you gotta look for, I'm sure they got most of it off the road by now, but when you're coming up during these storms, rock slides are very, very prevalent up here, especially through the whole little Arctic Circle. So you gotta be very careful. Like that big rock right there. Snow berms are up there, three quarters of the way up those, those snow poles on the left. For those of you who don't know what those are there for, that's so the snow plows can get a sense of where the edge is of the road, and in this case, the cliff, so they don't run off. 
when I first moved up here, I, I always wanted to like find one that got knocked down and just keep it at my house because as a kid, I would always think about those and just how exciting it was to like see the snow going all the way up to the top of them. Especially when I lived in Denver, Colorado, I would go up uh, every Wednesday, our school, because I went to a boarding school there, would take us to one of the major ski resorts every single Wednesday in the wintertime, and, and it was something else. You want to talk about some real snow? That was some crazy, crazy snow. This guy, we can wait. Do you, do you feel the cold from the seats? Or no? Okay, oh, I'm glad. Once again, this is like a nine or 10 mile stretch from the Big Bear Dam until you get to the other side of the Arctic Circle, little Arctic Circle, I should say. Temperature hasn't risen so much yet, but it has gone up one degree. We're at a higher elevation than all of the valley in Big Bear. But I'm assuming the reason why it gets so warm here is because just to the left of these snow berms on the left here, or just on, on the other side of those snow berms, the, uh, there's a cliff and it's a very steep, steep, steep fall for probably a couple thousand feet. So um, I think the heat rises from down there and doesn't have anything to like block it off all the way up here. So that's why I think, and that's probably the right answer I'm hoping. And a lot of you are probably like, duh, <laughs> you know, but thought you guys would be stoked to see this I wanted to go during the day so you could actually see it but I figured going when it's really cold outside when the roads are at their worst it would be the best for you guys so you can really see as I as you guys know I've been doing this for years and years and years as a matter of fact on this channel years ago I used to do some of my regular videos I would drive all the way down the mountain like down this way and then come back up on highway 38 which is what we might do today. We'll see. At the top of Highway 38, guys, that temperature is going to be ridiculously cold when we get back. Probably, if we take it, it'll probably be close to t t like 10 degrees. And I know my wife likes Chinese food, so we're probably going to stop and get some Chinese food on the way home and then go up. Panda Express. I like... Um, it's kind of a knockoff of, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh my gosh, why, why am I spacing it? It's called Payway, but is, is, is it Payway kind of like a, a knockoff of P.F. Chang's? <laughs> Let me know what you guys think about that. But yeah, look at, look at how, how far away from the lake we are already. That is where we are driving. We're driving through all that green right there. interesting that always happens too so it's it says 28 right now when we go down into the bowl where uh, snow valley is it's hundreds of feet lower than here it gets so cold in that bowl it, it's you'll see the temperature drop so rapidly
you're coming up to Big Bear, be careful because there are so many potholes. I've never seen it as bad. It is really, really bad. And there's some really big ones that'll really damage your car. So you need to be extremely careful. And it's on the main boulevard mostly too. On Big Bear Boulevard. So be, be extremely careful. Keep your eyes peeled for those. Guys, you know I, I get frustrated once in a while, but don't be this guy in front. There's a line of cars behind me. He has plenty of, of spots to pull over and let other traffic by, but he's not. It's his world and we're just passing through it. Don't be that guy up here, please, because it's it, it causes backups. I always pull over for the, like, you saw that that, that one truck pass me. I got over in, in, like into the slow lane to let him pass me even if he's driving like a schmuck. You guys know if I had my other car, we would have used the train horn probably. <laughs> Maybe not in these conditions, but. A lot of you love it, my train horn. Some of you think it's extremely rude and I can see, I can see it from, from both ends of the spectrum. And then when they let you pass, you push your hazards to say thank you. That's because it is nice of them to, to do that, to let you pass. So the temperature didn't get above 28. It only went up one degree on the little Arctic Circle. Usually I'll see it go up five or six degrees. And I'm interested, so I'm interested to see how cold it's gonna get down here at Snow Valley as we are descending in altitude here. And a lot of times they'll get more snow than us, even though it's a lower elevation. It's because they get hit with these storms first. Look at the snow banks on the left-hand side. Those are humongous. That's way above, not way above my car, but it's definitely higher than my car. stay where I see some dry parts of the road. spin out right here and get hit, hit the snowbank to the left 
But yeah, we're about to hit uh, Snow Valley. There she is. Can't really tell, but that's another ski resort we have up here, you guys. Look at that snowbank. Jeez. <laughs> Humongous. Temperature's back down to 27. Usually this stretch right here, you guys, it'll just plummet. Every, like Most times that I drive it, it'll plummet. But right now there's no plummeting going on. slips on this whole drive but my wife went she, she already went down the mountain once today and she said she, she was kind of slipping quite a bit so with with those of you with two, uh, two wheel drive vehicles just just be extra cautious it's not worth crashing to come up here it's really not Give yourself as much time as you need to get here. It did fall to 26, but now we're, we're definitely starting a descent again. can avoid when you get up to the top from highway 330 where it hits highway 18 if you can avoid those two gas stations on the way to big bear i would avoid them for gas they absolutely jack you it's like a dollar or more per gallon there than it is anywhere they fully take advantage of the people who allow them to have a business up here which is you guys
back up to 27 you guys as soon as we get to the top of the 330 and start heading down the temperature is gonna go up pretty quickly that's gonna happen for sure because we're descending but it's been pretty steady so far on this drive if you turn right here it's a town called uh, what's the town called Green Valley Lake and this part of the, the big the San Bernardino National Forest at the very top up there, it's four it's a four mile drive. I believe that they probably get the most snow of any town up here and by a significant, significant amount. Too, but I've never eaten there. I've stopped to use the restroom there and they wouldn't let me unless I bought something so I bought a soda. They weren't thrilled about that but they let me. It was like a three dollar and fifty cent like small cup of soda. Sometimes this part of the mountain will get a lot more snow than us. Because the storms hit this part of the mountain range first. And then this, the mountain range just tears the storms up or misdirects them. And that's why I think it's so hard to predict in Big Bear any weather. So we are at Valero. I thought I, I, I said Sinclair, didn't I? Actually, the prices aren't too jacked up here, but it's about 60 cents, 70 cents more per gallon than it is in Big Bear. So, can't see any parking spots. So I'm going to shut it off now, guys, until we start heading down here. All right, talk to you guys soon. If you guys are enjoying so far, please hit the like and subscribe button and the notification bell. I've never said that one yet. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate the support. I really right, guys, do. we have backed out of uh, Valero and we are out of here. Back onto Rim of the World Highway, AKA Highway 18. It's a, it's a, that's a, a cool name, Rim of the World, because we are at, on the, uh, the Rim of the World, you could say. Hopefully the lights down at the bottom look beautiful from up here. We'll see.
and I got my part 107 license for drones so I'm super excited about that I just got to be extremely careful flying of course I'm not gonna fly in any restricted airspace or really over people the only problem is that I like to fly above snow summit and look down and so that's actually something that I, that I don't think technically I can do unless I get a waiver so I would have to apply for a waiver but yeah we got my part 107 it was like 170 bucks my FAA stuff okay here's our first view of the lights down the mountain guys 6,000 feet down So I told you guys not to stop at any of these two gas stations, the Valero or the 76, because it's a joke price-wise. But if you guys are really hungry when you get up to the top, Rocky's Roadhouse has phenomenal sandwiches, you guys. Very good sandwiches right here. But I always suggest for you guys coming up here, especially if you're coming up here during this, this time of year, and especially even more when it's snowing, Fill your gas tank up to the to the brim when you're at the ver just at the bottom of the mountain. Fill it up completely because if you get stuck, you you're gonna want to have heat for as long as you can possibly have until someone comes to rescue you. So, so never come up this mountain without a full tank of gas. And I, as I said, make sure you fill it up at the bottom of the mountain, not like in Riverside or something. If you're on your way from that area, get off at the last exit before you would climb up the mountain and fill it up there bring extra clothing bring blankets bring food and water to last you a few days and let a few people know exactly where you're gonna go and when to expect to hear from you it's really important guys okay temperatures 29 degrees we're on highway 330 now we're heading down heading down the mountain you can see the city lights straight ahead wow it's so beautiful it feels like you're on an airplane up here, looking down. If the window wasn't so dirty, it would be a much better view. The side window here, but it is dirty. We'll do our best though. And then those of you that have Airbnbs up here, I'm I'm telling you guys, my wife, she she's a supervisor for um, a company that does a ton of Airbnbs, but she she's in the process of getting her own business, getting fully licensed, getting her limited liability corporation, um, her LLC, and uh, any of you have any needs for that we would absolutely love to help you guys out and she is so freaking thorough she is really really good at what she does um, she's by far the best person that they have that's why she's a supervisor and makes really good money I mean guys it's really good money but she deserves to have her own business and be a little more financially free so if you guys uh, need someone who's really really good and really thorough and always on time gets the job done give my wife a shot give my wife a shot I told you guys this before and a couple of you have actually responded about it obviously she can help you without having her license yet but that that day's coming soon temperature's going up 31 degrees I still need to slow down because some of these wet spots can be very slippery still this is where we're at right here 32 degrees instead of showing you guys every time because it's gonna rise quickly I'll just tell you <laughs> See, 
that guy in the front of that line didn't ever pull out and he's holding up a bunch of people. Guys, it's, it's really frustrating for us and for a lot of you. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk about it. Just, you know, pull out every chance that you have to let other people pass. It's not an appendage measure, measuring type of a situation. Like, it's, it, it's not that. We all need to respect each other and uh, let the faster people go. And anyways, you'll get to enjoy the drive even more. Now we're above freezing. 33 degrees and we're about to come up to an absolutely incredible view guys look at that you guys oh my gosh that is beautiful that is gorgeous oops let's run off my brights for this person As you guys can see, there's there's no snow really. I mean, there's there, there's a little bit on the side of the roads and on these hills, but don't be disappointed. I was I was always as a kid really disappointed a lot, like not always, but most of the time, because when we were this high, I would think like we're like already there just about, and I wasn't seeing any snow, and it was so sad for me. But the further deep you go into the mountain range, the more snow there is. Four degrees. Just to give you, I'm, I'm telling you guys this so you get a sense of how quick going up and going down the temperature is changing. What do you guys think it's going to be at the bottom? So at the top up there, it was, I, I can't remember, but I'm going to say at the bottom, it'll be like 48, 49, maybe 50. Can you guys believe the coldest temperature we've seen in Big Bear? I think it was in 1981. I could be wrong, but it was minus 28 degrees. Fahrenheit. I mean, imagine how cold it was in like Redlands and San Bernardino. If it was that cold up there, then it was probably hovering around zero down there, which is just epic.
Once again, thank you guys for cruising with us. I appreciate it. I'm literally just going right back up. So this is all for you guys. I'm super, super tired, but a lot of you are asking what it's like driving up and down right now. And you know what? I thought, why not? Why not go out and, and do this for you guys? So that's what we're doing. Six degrees. see Palm Springs way out there the lights at the furthest point you can see I just cracked my window a little bit you guys know because I talk about it all the time that I don't roll down my windows in this car really ever. I just use the climate control for everything because if you guys see the inside of my other Subaru, it is the most dusty car I've ever seen in my life. And I didn't want that to happen to this car. But when I get that other Subaru back, I'm getting a detail from my wife so she has something safe to drive in these conditions. The snowy conditions, icy conditions. I think they're done with it you guys so we're just waiting for the tow truck to be able to drive it up here I might have to use one of my AAA tows to get it up here but that's okay and when my wife isn't driving it like at night after work when we have big 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 snowstorms I'll, I'll take that out for the short videos just so uh, we don't destroy this of course I don't want to hurt that car either but my new baby. I don't want to hurt this car at all. I found a new scratch on it when we were at uh, Valero. So upsetting to me. I know it's just a car, you guys. I know, but you know when you work really hard and use every penny you have to make these payments and nothing left over, like it, it kind of hurts you a little bit that people are so inconsiderate. We're at 38 degrees, guys. Sorry about that, I have to clean the lens. So I shut it off for two seconds. We're almost down to the down to the bottom. As soon as we leave the San Bernardino National Forest, guys, that is when we will be done with the video. My ears are popping like crazy. How about yours, babe? No? Oh, mine like hurt. That's better. I just climatized. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I thought mine were on. My guy's probably mad at me. I just flashed my brights thinking they were on. I was turning them off for the car coming our way. Forty degrees already, you guys. Look at that. It happens quickly.
doing doing well. I hope you're enjoying the drive. Maybe if you like put mute on the video so you don't have to listen to me this whole time, play some nice music in the background and just relax and cruise down from Big Bear to Highland with me and then maybe we'll, if we go up Highway 38, then you'll have a nice drive going up. This next little dirt spot on the right is where I crashed my motorcycle the first day that I drove my first motorcycle right there. Boom, my light fell off and everything. I'll never forget that. Of course I wouldn't forget that. And then it took me six months to go get the light. I kept on driving down and passing it and passing it because I didn't realize that the light was missing right away until I got back home because I was so embarrassed. I got the bike up and rode away, kind of tried to chase chase the person who was tailgating me a little bit like an idiot that wasn't smart but yeah they didn't even stop such jerks man anyway we're almost out of the San Bernardino National Forest thank you guys for taking the cruise from Big Bear all the way down through highway 18 to highway 330 and into Highland California it is a very nice peaceful drive now we're gonna go get dinner and then just come right back up guys thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the drive we are now in san and well it says san bernardino actually so we're technically in san bernardino i guess you guys take care and uh we'll talk to you later thanks again it's july or january 18th 2023
Peace out, you guys.